Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Also, we'll be airing on Israeli News Live, Patreon, our many, many platforms. It'll be also there on our apps. Uh, thanks to our good friend, Bill. God bless you, brother Bill. Uh, you have to give me a shout sometime. My brother hadn't talked in a bit. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, that is on the app. Uh, you go to the app store there. You can download Israeli News Live for both Android and your other devices. And uh, we really do appreciate uh, you guys being able to follow us on those different platforms. IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website. Uh, so don't forget that uh, as well. Listen, I, as I've been sharing with you guys, I've been doing a lot of study uh, biblically here lately. So this is why I've been getting more into the uh, teaching aspects because I'm very concerned about what's coming. Uh, there's a lot of things happening, and I'm probably going to be doing another message over on Patreon going into those issues there. Uh, things that I'm aware of that is happening on the earth and uh, as it relates to biblical prophecy. And uh, but, but here, I just want to do a teaching here that is warning you about the false prophets, the teachers that are that are already in our midst, have been here for a long time. And 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 I also uh, we're going to focus here in Second Peter specifically. We're going to take a focus here on verse um, 14, where where he talks about the cursed children. Uh, really just amazing. Some of the things the father has shared in my heart about this and, and revealed to me that I want to share with you guys as well. And, and, I, and I have to give you a quick little testimony about this as well. Um, I was, I've, for, for several days now, I have not been able to get off my mind uh, the, the, the scripture about the broken cisterns that can hold no water. Uh, they just kept coming to my heart. And I'm putting this message together here because I've been reading uh, over in the New Testament, quite a bit of the different books there. And uh, as I did, that just stayed on my heart. Well, I, I decided I wanted to go, especially after looking at the book of Jude the other day, I wanted to go back to Second Peter. Actually, I read all of Peter's writings, but I wanted to go specifically back to Second Peter uh, because he likens a very similar, um, uh, whether you call it an analogy or, or a reality, of what Jude does in, in his book there about this corruptible people that have crept into the church. And uh, so at any rate, as I did, I'm reading this and, and finally I just, I couldn't shake this broken cisterns, broken cisterns. So I go over there and I look it up. Okay, where was that? Jeremiah, I think it's chapter two. Um, and ironically, it's dealing with what we're gonna read about right now. So I think you guys are going to really, uh, I think it's going to be a blessing to you guys. So, so uh, let's, let's get right into this. Don't want to waste any time. Also, don't forget, and I'll have it in the description below, the different channels you can find us on. Uh, some of them we have a little trouble with. You know, Yana's doing a, a, her channel over on BitChute, but I think she's going to focus more with brand new tube on posting her videos that she's going to be doing. Uh, and uh, but of course, Israeli News Live, that's everywhere. iConnectFX.com. And I, I know a lot of people have had issues with that. Go back and try it again. They're always making changes. And as I mentioned to you recently, they're about to be coming out where because they have the one of the most amazing softwares of translators in the world to where your video can be uploaded. And when you click on the language there, the person, if they're in Spain or if they're in France or Russia, whatever country, even Israel and Hebrew, they can hear you speak in that language. Actually, it's another person speaking, of course, but it makes it look like you're speaking. And I think that is an amazing tool, especially for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, uh, and they consulted me about that because there's two different things they were working on, which would I prefer to see come out first? And I said the language. Uh, so uh, that's something I just want to share with you. But Israeli News Live is still available on YouTube by God's grace somehow. We've managed not to be fully taken off. Fact News Network. Fact News Network on YouTube. Uh, my own private channel, Stephen Ben Noon on YouTube. And I'll have the links in the description below. 
that channel sometimes I drop videos in there that most people don't ever get to see. Uh, Patreon Israeli News Live, and that's another way to support the work we do. Uh, so at any rate there, uh, then we have the bit shoot, uh, bit shoot Israeli News Live, Rise Up Children of God bit shoot channel. I'll put that in there. Our good friend, Brother Bill out in California, who has uh, done an amazing job to put the apps together that you can go and right there and download Israeli News Live app on Android or Apple products. Anyway, enough of all that. And uh, and listen, I'm going to be talking about the EMP Shield on our news broadcast later today, too. So those of you that may not be aware of that, EMPShield.com, uh, that's going to be a real issue. And I just got a briefing on when that might be a real issue. So I'll be sharing that on the news broadcast. So check that out over there. I don't want to talk about that on teaching here. I don't like to talk about anything about money over here on that, as far as that type of stuff. Uh, anyway, let's get into this. False prophets and teachers is how they have Second Peter listed here. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. We're seeing this already. I mean, you know, I, I, I was reading in a document not long ago, uh, 2,000 year old document that literally spoke about that very issue, uh, talking about the imitator. In other words, the Antichrist would come, but he would send his ministers first. Uh, you know, this is exactly what Peter is saying. And people follow after their pernicu uh, pernicious ways there. You know, it's. <sighs> It is so diabolical what they're planning and what they've been doing. And they've already, you know, as it says here, there shall be false teachers among you who private, privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. All right. And we're seeing this especially in the move back towards, I mean, and listen, I love the people that, 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 that want to embrace the Hebrew roots. I love people that, I mean, listen, I was, I've always been considered a Messianic Jew because as a Jewish person, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Well, I like to say Israelite. You know, my ancestry is that. But at the same time, uh, I, you know, of course, I did embrace a lot of the traditions as well because that's what my family was. But the thing is, the more that I came awake into the revelation of Jesus Christ, the more I put off those things. Why? Because that's not what Christ came to do. You know, as the scripture says, there remaineth another priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, not after the order of Aaron. And because of that other priesthood, Christ brought in that. That's why he didn't bring in a do's and don'ts. Remember, as I quoted to you the other day, where the Pharisees and Sadducees were saying, they, they were saying that these people are cursed that do not believe the law, or they, don't, or they do not know the law. All right? God bless them. That was the, he was. They were talking about the very believers of Jesus Christ, the, those that were holding to Him, and they were the, the Pharisees considered them cursed because they didn't know the law. Well, thank God they didn't. You know, uh, this, it's, it's a trap, friends. It's a trap, and this is this is exactly what they're doing. They're denying Christ, and and you already know. I'm not going to mention names here today. I'm going to really try to refrain from that. If I accidentally said, forgive me, but a lot of messianic teachers right now are trying to get you under the bondage of the law saying that Jesus was a Jew and and we got to we got to do like Jesus did Jesus was God manifested in a human body he was not just a Jew okay 
he came, he broke practically everything that they thought was so righteous. And, and notice, you ever notice how he says it? He said, you've heard it said of them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, if he asks for you, your coat, give him your cloak also. Now he's quoting Levitical law, by the way. You know, and Jesus just now tells you to do just the opposite of that. You know, they, 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 they wanted to stone him because they said he broke the Sabbath. Tell the guy, pick up your bed and walk. Well, of course, according to their law, it was the breaking of the Sabbath. Jesus says, judge which is righteous. Which is it better, to do good on the Sabbath or to do bad? You know, I'm just paraphrasing. I may have got that wrong when I quoted that just now. I'm just sitting here thinking to myself. But anyway, the point is, The law that Jesus gave us, because if you remember, like the, the, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he says, good master, what must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus says, thou knowest the commandments. And then he quotes a few, just a few of them. Do not kill, do not steal, etc. cetera, right that. He doesn't quote Levitical law though, does he? No. And he said, these all I have done since my youth. Jesus says, you do lack one thing. Take everything you have, sell it, and give it to the poor. Then you'll have treasures in heaven. Wow. Jesus also taught us that love thy neighbor as thyself and love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And all the law hangs on those two. But they're trying to bring you back under the subjection of Levitical law or Noah, Noahidism and or the Noahide laws, we should call that, not just Noahidism. So therefore, what are they doing? They're bringing you back under the bondage. And this is exactly what Peter is talking about here. Uh, if you put it in modern day terms, he's dealing with it back then. I mean, look, Jesus had just come and they already got the problem. Jude said the same thing. No wonder why John writes in the uh, the three books of John there, you know, the Antichrist spirit has already come. They were dealing with that spirit already. And Antichristo is a substitute, an imitation of what's real. And uh, But even Paul, Paul finally ended up having to withstand Peter as well. And maybe this was, you know, he was doing with the face because of trying to put, you know, dealing too, still too much leaning towards law. Anyway, let's move on though. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now for a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, I think it's interesting. Make merchandise of you. Let's just look at the word real quick. Let's see what they use there. Merchandise. Travel in country and a, a, as a peddler. <laughs> uh, you guys can probably do a little bit of imaginative abilities right now and, and realize what that's all about, right? Uh, and listen, I, I don't want to overstep that either. I realize people that do ministry work um, you know, they rely on the support of the people to be able to exist. But I don't think that you have to be a peddler to exist. You don't have to be wealthy. Just God knows what you have need of. And I've never, we've never been forsaken ourselves. So to me, it's not right then to do that. If you have to go out and become a peddler, then my gosh, you shouldn't be in the ministry then. Get out, you know, go become a shoe salesman or something. <clears throat> I, I just, I just say that sincerely, you know, I mean, the only thing I've ever, <clears throat> that, I, that, that we actually got into was the EMP shield. And I'm not even going to discuss that here. We'll do it. I am going to speed about on the news channel later today. And yes, the company does support the ministry we do as a result of that. But it's because I believe in the product. Otherwise, I wouldn't care. I, I could care less. 
Uh, but anyway, they make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, you got to keep this in mind about this damnation and stuff and the judgment, because this Peter is typing this in a, indirectly, but he's typing this to what happened with the fallen angels and the Nephilim before the flood. Notice verse four, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them to chains of darkness to be reserved unto the judgment. See, that was what I tell you. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly, and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for the righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord know, knoweth how to deliver the godly out of the temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. All right, now we just got, Peter just did the exact same thing that Jude did. He has just compared this evil group that has entered into the church to that of a Nephilim bloodline. All right, yes, he did. And, and, and as I said to you guys before, if you go into Sodom and Gomorrah and you look in there, that strange flesh they went after, the Hebrew word in there, that's, they're, they're not going, at, this is not homosexuality. This is dealing with fallen angels, demonic things. And then think about it. Jesus says, Matthew, let's just quickly, let's jump over to that real quick. Um, Oh, let me think if I can. Yeah, Matthew 24. All right. I, th I think it's very important that, that, that we see these things, right? Matthew 24. And I think it's around verse 35 or so, 36, 29. Um, okay. But that day and hour, no man knoweth, no not excuse me, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only, but as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days that Noah were before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving, giving in marriage until the day that the Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. All right. So that's coming upon us. And that judgment is coming, but not only as a judge, in other words, when Christ comes, he's kind of coming for destruction, friends. But what's going to happen? He said, as it was in the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, what were they doing? They were indulging in these sexual affairs with fallen angels and things. And think about it, CERN has opened the portal, and I've actually been told by the people that work directly with this, you know, I, I know scientists that have worked with CERN, that it has opened up a portal, and even government officials have been talking about, uh, what do they call those, those three, three different types of, uh, uh, excuse me, um, not three, I'm, I got, that's a different issue altogether. But um, I think they call them skin changers. Believed to be uh, fallen angels. But that portal has opened the door to that. That's something we talk about over on Patreon. That's what I'm actually going to be getting into deeper on Patreon here in a video very soon here. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to be doing it soon. There's some, I've I posted a couple of videos there just recently. One of those videos, I do go into some of those things, but not as deep as I plan on doing it. Okay, whereas the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, back up, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Second Peter chapter two, verse nine, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly. Okay. But verse 10, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanliness and despise governments presumptuous 
are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Uh, and it's not talking about government officials either, okay? Whereas angels, which are greater in power, might bring not a railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not. Notice they're brute beasts, right? This is why I tell you what's going on over in Israel right now is a beast kingdom. We're talking about Nephilim bloodlines that are running this nation. And you think that it's, you're blessing Israel by blessing them? No, you're not. Israel was born a nation in one day, 2,000 years ago, on the day of Pentecost. That's when that scripture was fulfilled. Not in modern state, the modern state of Israel that was started by the Rothschild family, which, by the way, the Rothschilds are of Egyptian descent, and they are part of the Nuf and Taphanes bloodlines which is nothing but a Nephilim bloodline in the first place. And they are the ones that make merchandise of you too, by the way. Whereas angels, which are great. Okay, we got read that there. Okay, so anyway, verse 13. And shall, excuse me, and shall receive reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Uh, this is insane. They're feasting with you. They're in your churches. They were back then. What do you think they are now? But their blemishes, okay, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of what? Adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Cursed children. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. All right. But was rebuked for his iniquity, and the dumbass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. All right, let me back up just for a moment here. They're what? They're cursed children. They're full of adultery, right? Beguiling unstable souls. Well, let's go see. Let me, let me listen. Who's the first cursed child that was ever spoken of? And by the way, the word cursed is not used a whole lot in Scripture. But the first cursed child that is spoken of is Cain. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So there's your first curse. Okay. Now, but also, we were just reading here. Um, get down to this next part here as well. These are wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest and to whom the midst, mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were cleaned, escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage and they bring you into bondage back under the law for if they after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them 
but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit and the sow that was washing to her, her wallowing in the mire. Now, let me back up and show you something here. See if I can find it there. I saw it a second ago. Here we go, Jeremiah. Now, I'll start with verse 10. For Passover, this is Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 10. For Passover, the isles of Chittim, and see and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountains, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Jesus Christ is the fountain of living water. When he was, when his side was pierced by the soldier there on Mount Calvary, and the scripture says both blood and water come from his body, it was separated, and that was written in the Gospel of John. He that what did it say? The scripture says, "Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water." Remember what he said to the woman at the well: "If you knew who it was that was talking to you, you would ask me for a drink, and I would give you a water that you don't have to come to this well anymore." He was showing that he has a fountain of living water, and that living water was the chayim, the life. What is, and, and also he's what? He's the tree of life. What did we have in the Garden of Eden? The Ace Chaim, and you have the uh the Ace of uh, uh of of um uh, of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Yodea Vera of knowledge of good and evil. The serpent used the knowledge of good and evil tree. Jesus was the Eis Chaim. And when he breathed onto that body, into the nostrils of Adam, he was breathing what? The Chaim. From what? The Eis Chaim. The fruit of a tree of life is Chaim. God's own life. And he breathed it into Adam in a plural form. Adam becomes, uh, you know, uh, Adam, uh, 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 excuse me, he became a living soul, Chaya, Chaya, you know, he becomes that living, nefesh chaya, he becomes that living soul, a singular form, but the plural form is breathed in him because why? Eve is in the body with Adam. All right, so he's that tree of life planted by the rivers of waters of life. And then what do we have? Christ saying that he is, he would, he would give them that living water, he actually quotes the scripture at one point. He said, out of him, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So when they pierced his side, his blood came out, but his water came out separated from his blood, showing that he was that well of living water. But they have what? They have forsaken the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Watch what he says here. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Also the children of Noph and Taphanes have broken the crown of thy head. Noph and Taphanes, according to some of the Arabic writings that I found, were considered to be Nephilim bloodlines. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to God except by me. Do you think that that gives the Israeli people living in Israel some special kind of uh, of way that they're going to, oh, we got Yahweh for our God. Well, no, you don't. No man can come to the Father except by me. Jesus came to them. Do you th this is what's getting me. I'm listening to these teachers saying, don't worry, you don't have to, you don't have to preach Jesus to the Jews because the Jews have already got Yahweh and, and, and they got Yahweh and we got Jesus and that's okay. It's a two covenant system. That's a lie out of hell. That's a broken cistern that can hold no water. 
For all the prophets and everything prophesied of the coming of the just one, Jesus Christ, the one that would bring back eternal life, the one that would actually give them what they had need of. And the thing is, unless unless they get this, unless they recognize, Jesus said, except that you believe that I am, it doesn't say the word he, except that you believe, you will die in your sins. Think about that. Sorry, I don't mean to, I know some people don't like it to get a little bit loud. I apologize, uh, you know, but how, how, can you, how can you speak something so beautiful and then not be passionate about it? I just don't get it. Let's go to verse 17. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself and that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? Okay. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt to drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the ways of Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, that, that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress, when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. There's your cursed children. Yet, watch what he said. Verse 21 really clearly proves the point I'm saying here. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? These are allegories, friend. Do you not get it? When Peter says it was a cursed children. And he says, he goes on, he actually, Peter is, I didn't realize it, but Peter, they should have put that as one of the, one of the, uh, uh, and, and you know how they do those little commentaries. It should have been referenced to Jeremiah. That's the whale. That's the cistern. They were broken. They're whales. They can't hold any water. Do you realize what water he's talking about? It's the water of life of Jesus Christ. When you have a broken cistern, you are in a body that cannot receive the Holy Spirit because you have been a corrupted seed. This is what Jesus, what Jeremiah is writing about for of old time. I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands and thou sentest. I will not transgress one upon every high hill and under every green tree. Thou hast wonder playing the heart. Of. Yet I had planted a, the, a noble vine. When he brought it through Abraham, just like Paul says about uh, the uh, uh, Hagar, you know, he said Hagar represented Mount Sinai, which is Levitical law, you know, and what was she's under bondage? He said, cast out the bondwoman because she's not, her son will not be heir with the free woman. Sarah was the free woman and she believed it by what? By faith. And then we say here and we read this, yet I had planted thee a noble vine. That was Sarah's son. Yitzhak, Isaac, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant, a strange vine unto me? Because you played the harlot. And that's what Israel did. Go back and search the scripture. You can find it. Leviticus chapter 18. Numbers also chapter 13, I believe it is. When even even the priests and the Levites, according to uh, what is it, the book of um, uh, Ezra, you went and corrupted your seed. You went and corrupted the seed, and you slept with those women and stuff, and you brought in all these damnable children. And then some people have the the audacity to say, "Oh, they never came to Israel because Ezra made them put away all these wives and their kids and made them go back to their to their families and stuff." Well, when Hello, when the uh, when when uh, the king of Babylon sent them all back to their nations, he sent back the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites right back into Israel again. So where do you think their kids went to? And all this is just laying right there, right there in front of our face, and nobody's paying attention to this. Let me go back to Peter real quick. And I want to take you over to Job here, and we'll, we'll, kind of, we'll come back to Job here in a second. I'll close with Job. Um, oh, 
I have to manually go to Peter now. Normally you can just back up and forward and stuff and do that, but oh, I'll tell you what. This is an amazing study, friends. An amazing study to me. So let's jump back down here again. Second Peter chapter 2. So he says, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of, mist of darkness is reserved forever. A well with no water, no Holy Spirit. As Jeremiah said, broken cisterns. I, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm even getting revelation as I was reading this to you. While they promise, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he that brought him to bondage. You know, what's interesting to me about that is that's exactly what they're doing. And this is what I see these teachers doing today. And I've, I've spoken their names too many times. You know what I'm talking about. They're making it look like the law is going to come out of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is going to be the headquarters of the whole thing. And, and uh, you need to listen to these rabbis because you can learn from these rabbis. Yeah, they're going to bring you right into bondage. And you will forsake the way of life if you go in that direction. Let me show you something I run across in Job here real quick too, if I can find it again. Job 24, um, and I caught this under the part about the word cursed. 24:15. the eye also of the adulterer waiteth for the twilight, saying, No eye shall see me, and disguiseth his face. In the dark they dig through houses, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. They know not the light. For the morning is to them as the shadow of death, if one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. He is swift as the waters, their portion is cursed in the earth. He beholdeth not the way of the vineyards. There again, notice the vineyard there. That true vine, that right seed that was planted, as we just read a second ago. But that adulterer, these are the fallen angels. These are your Nephilim bloodlines intermingling the seed. And then what do they do? If they can't, if they can't intermingle the seed with you, then what do they do? They just pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ because they crept in unaware. They seek out your liberty only to pollute your liberty so that you're trying to prevent you. What did Jesus said? They cross land and sea to make one proselyte. He said, but when they do, they make them twofold more child of hell than they themselves are. Think about it. I trust this message has been a blessing to you. And um, if you do, if God lays it upon your heart, you want to support the work we do. Our address is right there on the above the screen there for you. And uh, or if you want to donate online, you can. Uh, israelinewslive.org is our website and don't forget in the description below is our different channels that you can be listening to as well i got to get ready to go in there and be with yana on a broadcast that we're putting together for you guys today for israeli news live there's going to be two different ones though there'll be one that'll just be a news one on israeli news live but then there's going to be one that is on the other channels uh patreon uh places like that brand new tube because the information is far too sensitive. We're going to deal with what's going on in Israel with all this stuff that's happening in the world today. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Denun Institute of Biblical Research, and thank you for listening.